recent years, traffic congestion has been horrendous in Nairobi County, with typical commute time for people going to work ranging from one hour to two hours for distance of 10 to 15 kilometers, leaving many Kenyans responding to this situation by leaving home as early as 4 a.m. to avoid the madness. However, majority of people are still caught up in traffic jams despite the time, resulting in loss of man hours, fuel and pollution that cost the economy approximately 37 billion annually. And with no oversight body controlling pricing in public vehicle system, commuters are left in the mercy of circles and operators who hike bus fare at slightest opportunity that presents itself. One jam is a jam. This situation forcing county bosses and even the national government to try tackle the menace by introducing new rules to expand and strengthen its public transport. The very recent of this is the car free day that was introduced by Nairobi County government in February this year but was later suspended. This is an example of different plans to decongest the city that always ends up failing. This proving how Kenyans have suffered in one way or another from the city traffic, a situation that has forced many public service vehicles hiking their prices, leaving the common Monainchi car in the economic burden. Oh, I live along Mombasa Road and usually in the morning hours there is traffic. Especially at Nyayo Stadium, you can get stuck there close to 30 or 40 minutes, or sometimes even to close to one hour. And uh, most of the people going to town are affected. It's too much, even the matatus are changing as even more fares to go to town. Sometimes you'd find yourself in a Tumia Boda, Boda Boda, but then again, Ata Kama Ni Boda Boda, sometimes Barabara Imeja, because everyone wants to use it. But what could be the problem leading to failed implemented plans? Could it be inappropriate planning? We speak to Mr. Edwin Mukabana, who is the MD Kenya Bus Service and the transport expert. Where we have had the flip-flop is, uh, is, is on several parameters. But the first parameter is that for you to implement a good transport plan, you must have the human capacity. So you must have human capacity both on the operator side and you have good uh, human capacity on the, on the regulator side. Nine months ago, Nairobi County wanted National Transport and Safety Authority to stop issuing licenses for any new SACO intending to have public service vehicle to operate within the central business district. Months later, business is as usual. Duncan Kabogong, who is the Deputy Director and Head of Road Safety Program at the National Transport and Safety Authority, tells us on the licensing of vehicles within the city. It means that we will now give them licenses after collaborating with them and agreeing which routes are going to be there and which are not going to be there. There was a, um, a task force called Congesting the City of Nairobi and that is headed by the Ministry of Transport and us, a number of stakeholders, including ourselves. And that is work in progress. And that includes a whole range of short-term, medium-term and long-term uh, um, programs to ensure that the, the city is decongested. According to Mr. Kabogong, large number of low-capacity vehicles is what has been affecting the transport system in Kenya. The cause of the congestion, largely speaking, in, in the CBD is because of large number of low or a big number of low capacity vehicles in the city uh, for example and you're not just talking about uh, public service vehicles you are talking about the private vehicles the people driving one car uh, one driver per car that kind of thing but how could these plans be achieved in nairobi a city which has a high population that keeps growing every single day what we lacked is that we did not have those mobility plans being implemented. And I like what you started by saying. The issue is not that the mobility plans have not been there, but the implementation of those mobility plans has been a problem. And as Kenya awaits sanity in the transport sector, countries like Colombia are celebrating 18 years of adopting bus rapid transit system. Bogota City in Colombia, which has approximately 8 million people, runs fast in the world for improving its transport system and saving the economy. Last year I was in Bogota, and uh, Bogota is, um, is, a, is a town that uh, implemented BRT in a very good way. 
The success of Bogota was based on one mayor of Bogota. Uh, we normally say for any transport system to succeed, you must have a good champion. While population pressure has been one of the key contributing factors to transport challenges, other factors include increased vehicle ownership, inefficient spatial distribution of land uses, inadequate transport infrastructure, lack of proper traffic control, and lack of proper transport planning. Even as the big question remains whether the needs of common Mwanaichi is looked upon before implementing any plans to decongest Nairobi City, it should be noted for Kenya to achieve its Vision 2030, the transport sector needs to be improved. Katie Lale, Switch TV in Nairobi County.